we should talk about what a seventh chord is. So far, we've been playing three note chords that have been one, three, and five borrowed from a key. Now, seventh chords are when we continue this pattern and we add in a seven. One, three, five, and seven. So these are now four note chords. Now, there are a few ways to find a seventh chord. We could do it with intervals or half steps. Starting with a basic chord using C as our example, if I want to put a seven on top, well, I can take my top note and make a major third interval. And that would be four half steps. One, two, three, four. I could also look at the notes in my key and say, okay, for a major chord, that would be C, E, G, and B. Another way to think about it that I like a lot is that your major seven is a half step below the octave. So if I'm playing a C chord, well, the octave from my root note is C, the major seven is a half step before that. If I'm playing a G chord, my octave is a G. So my major seven is a half step before that. That would be F sharp. For a minor seven chord, here's the changes we're making. First of all, we know from a major chord to a minor chord, the note we're changing is the middle one, the three. So it's down by a half step. We're also going to be changing the seven. So if I've got my major seven there, I'm moving the three down by a half step and I'm moving the seven down by a half step. Another way to think about it is that on top of a minor chord, we're adding a minor interval. So one, two, three, half steps. A third way to think about it is that from any minor chord in a key, we're counting one, three, five, and seven. And finally, my favorite way to find a minor seven, we talked about how the major seven is a half step below an octave, while the minor seven is a whole step below the octave. So if I'm playing from a C note, that's going to be C, E flat, G, and then that third minor interval on top would be a B flat. If I'm playing from a G, I'd have G, my minor third and the fifth, and then sitting on top of those, I have my octave, and I move down a whole step to an F. These seventh chords are inherently jazzy. They have a really nice, smooth tone to them, so they could also fit well in a softer song. I like them a lot to resolve. So if I'm playing a song, C, G, A minor, F, and I want to resolve, I could resolve to a seven. That is a nice resolution in a song. Let's talk about a dominant seventh chord. Now, you may remember from some of our terminology, we had in a key the tonic, subdominant, and dominant. Now, a dominant seventh chord, if we're playing this shape, fits perfectly in the fifth position of the key. And we'll talk about that in a couple lessons where we talk about fitting seventh chords into a key. Here's our dominant seven shape. We have a major chord as our bass. So I'll use C as my example. I've got a C major. Now, to fit here, to fit our major seven, we've got a major shape on top. So a major chord with a major seven on top. Our dominant seven 
changes a little bit. We've got a major chord, and then we put a minor third interval on top, or a minor seventh. I always thought this was kind of like a, a carnival sound. A little bit, a little bit cartoonish. But we've got a dominant seven shape, so we can think of that as root, third, fifth. Then instead of seven, we've got a flat seven. We're flatting that seven shape. Now, just like we have a minor flat five chord, we can also have a minor seven flat five. And that's a long chord. Let's say we have a C minor seven flat five. Well, we don't need to get overwhelmed. We can just take these one step at a time. We know we've got a C chord. We know it's going to be a minor chord. We know there will be a minor seven on top. And we know we're going to flat our five. So let's say we have a C minor with a minor seven on top. And now we take our five and we just make it flat. Finally, we have something called a diminished seven chord. And we're actually going to learn this one by starting from that minor seven flat five shape. So we have a minor chord with a minor seven on top and we flat our five. Now we can think of diminished as diminishing, smaller, right? Everything is smaller. We've got one, flat three, flat five, and by the time we get to our seven, we actually move it down again. This is our first example of a double flat note. A diminished seventh has a double flat seven. It's not a chord you're going to come across often, but it is a very haunting and eerie sound. Again, we can try it maybe from an F, and let's take this in steps. We've got F, we're gonna go minor, and add in the minor seven. So right now I'm playing an F minor seven chord. We've got a minor third interval, major third interval, and a minor third. Now I'm going to take my five and flat it, and then take my seven and flat it one more time for that haunting diminished sound. Let's take one quick look at all the chords we know put together and kind of relate them to each other. If we've got a major basic chord, we're playing one, three, and five. Using C as our example, this would be C, E, and G. To change major to minor, we're gonna take our three and move it down by one, one flat three and five, or C, E flat and G. We could also flat the five to play a minor flat five. C minor flat five. One flat three flat five or C, E flat and G flat. We could play a major seven. One, three, five and seven or C, E, G and B. We could play a minor seven by changing our three and our seven. One flat three, five flat seven, or C, E flat, G, and B flat. We could play a dominant seven by playing a major chord with a flat seven on top. One, three, five, flat seven, or C, E, G, B flat. We could play a minor seven flat five by playing that minor seven shape, flatting the five. One flat three flat five flat seven, or C, E flat, G flat, and B flat. Or finally, a C diminished seven, one flat three flat five double flat seven, or C, E flat, G flat, and A.